Namaskar. Friends, today we are with the poets who belong to a most beautiful country on the earth, like a fairy. Fairies, please. एक ऐसा देश जो सदियों पुराना है जिसका इतिहास 9000 साल से भी पुराना है लेकिन जो बहुत सालों तक भिन्न भिन्न शक्तियों के द्वारा उसके अधीन रहा चाहे जो जर्मन हो चाहे रोमन हो चाहे रूस हो और जिसने अपनी सारी की सारी अपनी सारी जो स्वतंत्रता है उसके लिए युद्ध की जगह एक ऐसे मार्ग का उपयोग किया जिसको हम यहाँ पर अहिंसा मार्ग कहते हैं और वहां था सिंगिंग फॉर द फ्रीडम फ्रेंड्स द सिंगिंग फॉर द फ्रीडम वॉज नॉट लेस देन अहिंसा ऑफ महात्मा गांधी जस्ट थिंक फॉर इयर्स द कंट्री द पीपल हु वॉज नॉट फ्री फॉर फॉर मैनी Hundred years were just trying to get freedom, to identity, and just their weapon was music, singing. The muse is in their language. The muse is in their life, and they got it very recently. Still, this country is the second highest in economy. in europe in the world i think maybe in in, in the europe especially european countries the country which has very high uh, is a highest education literacy and internet technology in very less year kya hum bhartiyon ko nahi sochna chahiye ki hum jo kehte hain 200 saal ke gulami ऐसे भी देश होते हैं जो 200 नहीं हजारों साल तक सैकड़ों साल तक गुलाम रहते हैं और फिर जब स्वतंत्रता प्राप्त करते हैं तो फिर वे अपनी उन्नति को बहुत जल्दी पा लेते हैं लेट एस इनवाइट टू वेरी शाइनिंग वेरी स्मार्ट पोइट्स फ्रॉम दिस ब्यूटीफुल कंट्री वन इज फर्स्ट इज दिस माथुरा एमलेटिक एंड ट्रिन Hi. Hello. Hello. These both are very bright poets, and they were part of Kritya from very early time. I think uh, he was Mathura was in two thousand eight onward. He came to Kritya two or three times, three times, and uh, uh, Trin also came two or two times. I think. Uh, hi yes you also you were also there in 2008 in punjab and in nagpur and he came third time also i just give a small introduction of mathura his name is margus latik but he has given his name as mathura you know that mathura is very indian name because and he got the highest award in 2014 and many other awards from his own country beside this why i respect him he has translated many world poets dylan thomas ben okri but i respect he has translated kuwar narayan a whole book very big book i respect him more because he has translated geeta bhagavad geeta into estonian languages languages i respect even more because he has translated niti shastra direct from sanskrit yes he came to india he learned sanskrit he can uh, he can read in sanskrit also and fortunately he has translated me also which was a very big thing for me now we talk about trin she is a author of 20 books 
very famous, very special poet, Estonian poet, member of Estonian writer, widely uh, uh, translated in many international languages, got many awards. The thing which I like in train is that she has a quality of a spiritual poet which we had in past we which we read in our sanskrit literature we used to read miss the poet who sees from his uh, inner voice inner eyes and that's what i feel in trin's poetry so welcome to you both friends uh, how are you? How is your country right now? Uh, please please tell me. Yeah, thank you. Uh, well, Estonia is in a bit difficult place at the moment with uh, the pandemic and all. But, um, well, I have the luxury. I stay in the countryside. I have my own house in the country. And so it doesn't... Uh, affect me in any immediate terms so much. But uh, yeah, it's I, I, it's probably a difficult time in many places and, and here is pretty much the same. And I think it's not only the pandemic, but because many other activities have been um, cut down or, or closed for the time being, also cultural or literary readings and so on. But uh, then again, well, we try to move on and still use our creative skills, maybe to uh, kind of survive or pass through that period better. My mic is moved. Many poets told me that they. Uh, they don't want to uh, come come in the meetings like this. But for my personal uh, experience that I'm also uh, in a jail for almost one year, but I could survive with these talks only because I could talk to them. I could understand, I could feel, I could smile at least, I could see few faces. So, uh, and I could talk some sensible thing. So this was actually boon because we have a technology in that time. So Trin, please you tell about yourself. Well, it's really difficult time as everywhere else right now, I think, uh, in Estonia. So uh, not, not much to tell. Uh, me personally, I try to read even more and maybe, maybe write even more or or even even better think more about things the world has uh, has stopped somehow and of course it would be nicer to be in india again and meet in person and and so on but i also think that uh, meetings like this are quite uh, quite good uh, thing at least you can you can see other poets and uh, and uh, it helps to to survive this uh, time i think this is actually bad time for us but this is the time when we can look back to ourselves mm -hmm. we can we can talk again about the nature see your country has fought against many things and i think one of the thing was that natural uh, or the artificiality under the uh, uh, under the rule of a country russia uh, or ideology which was not very natural so here again we can 
think that what is important and what is not important. What do you th talk about? What do you say about it? This. Well, for me, I think this period, as if there is a positive to it, so to say, it is that I really kind of re-evaluated many of my uh, well things that I do in this last year or so, and also kind of re-evaluated uh, what I what I write or what I want to do still creatively. I mean, maybe it's also partly an age thing that you get older and then you kind of reassess things but, but this has happened a lot to me in this uh, this last year and uh, and I have a book, new book coming out this spring and same as Trine, which is actually my first book of poetry in eight years so it's, it's quite a big thing for me but um, yeah it's um, Maybe it doesn't make me as happy as it would in, a, in normal circumstances. But regarding our, well, I think Estonia is, uh, Estonians are naturally quite uh, resistant people. Like we, what, if that's the right word, like we, we push on. So uh, historically, but also I think uh, in terms of our nature or our climate, it's a place which, uh, you know, doesn't provide for easy living, so so you have to be resilient. So uh, yeah, I think this is one of the qualities then that we have you know, developed or or kept through our past and history, and well, hopefully we'll manage to keep. Uh, it's a. Uh... What you are saying is uh, quite true for all of us. Uh, then uh, other thing, what I feel that, you know that the book which I was writing on poetry therapy and I send you for the pre-reading uh, is published. Uh, and uh, I have mentioned in it our experience in hospital. You know, you remember and your experience with the poetry therapy is also mentioned there. You gave a lecture that how the poetry therapy helped you personally when you had problem in your childhood and you could come up to this stage. I think that this same poetry therapy is helping us again. Uh, what do you talk about it? What do you say about it? Trin, do you want to say something? About... Uh... Poetry as a therapy? Well, uh, there are uh, two, two sides. One uh, is uh, could poetry be a therapy for the poet uh, himself or herself? And I try to avoid this uh, kind of writing because sometimes it really helps. But uh, if you are a real poet, you, you can't uh, write uh, to, to help uh, yourself. You should uh, write uh, for some other reason, I think. But I have heard that uh, some poems have really helped some people. My poems and also uh, other poets' uh, poems. And uh, it must be like a side effect, and it's really there. But it can't be a uh, main reason for writing, I think. Right, last time we had Kuhn Woon with us. Uh, I, uh, do you remember Kuhn Woon, uh, uh, Mathura? In book, I have mentioned Kuhn Woon. He was the first uh, who had a bipolar disease. And he hmm. used poetry as a therapy. And uh, uh, in a last talk, he was talking about his experience. And he was, he's fighting with his this bipolar disease for almost 30, 40 years with the poetry therapy. So, um, Madhura, I want you to uh, talk about poetry therapy a little bit more to our audience. Well, uh, let me say like this, maybe that uh, 
Well, I think poetry ter therapy can, uh, in some way, you could say it can be viewed from two sides. It can be viewed from the side of the writer or from the side of the you know listener or, or, or reader. Uh, so um, for the last two or three years, um, I have been teaching creative writing at our uh, Estonian Academy of Arts for students of uh, ceramics and uh, who do the work with metal. And um, well, they don't need to specifically write in the sense of writing poetry or something like this, but uh, uh, working with the visual material, they often ask for help to be able to word things better, like to give some uh, expression to their word works in uh, in speech or in writing. So I see there, or kind of, it can this experience convinces me that uh, that words have uh, great power or at least they have great potential and it's important to um, to express yourself not just in abstraction but also to put it in in words and uh, uh, for me I would say that I mean I would ag agree with Treen that when I'm writing I'm not specifically thinking that uh, this will be useful for or, or, or like therapy for somebody. But I think almost always writing uh, is uh, some form of therapy for myself. Or if, or if not therapy, then at least it kind of helps me make a better sense of, of myself or also make a better sense of the world. Uh, so that would be a little bit like on the side of the writer. But uh, I certainly also have experience of or, uh, well, not only with poetry, it can also be music or other artistic uh, media, but also with, uh, with poetry. That as a reader, you recognize something of yourself in, uh, in a poem of some, of some other author and uh, kind of assures you of yourself and of your, of your, um, what would I call it, of your strength, of your inner strength or inner potential. So I think the sense of recognition in, in poetry is something as a reader, which is very important to me and it kind of works, uh, works for me. And maybe just briefly the third thing, once you mentioned this experience in the hospital in, in Kerala, in uh, Trivandrum, yeah? So I think once you take it to... Uh, when it's not just a book anymore, like a poem on a page, but you take it into a live situation, uh, there are other things that come into play. Like, for example, in this, uh, in that case, uh, indeed, I have been in hospitals a lot in my own uh, childhood or, or, or early youth, and like going back there and seeing uh, there were also some children there uh, in that hospital and so on. So. It uh, such 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 situations can help you kind of bring forward something in your own, maybe some some of your own trauma or or difficulty, and through that experience, uh, relieve it or give another perspective to it. So I encourage you to continue with that. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much for both to both of you. You join it because I I'm asking you people for a long time <laughs> from Estonia. I have a special affection toward Estonia. And somehow you both suddenly one day, yes, said that because Mathura, I remember that for one year I'm asking you, well, not one year, I have started this talk in September. So almost three, uh, four months I was asking you, but you said thank you. For me, this is this kind of presentation is therapy. I do not know it is therapy for others or not. I do not know whether people are watching it or not. But I still feel that there is a nature, there is something which will bring the, uh, the people who want such kind of conversation 
to these uh, kind of talks which I have saved in YouTube. So this is uh, my uh, idea. Is first my idea was to survive myself because I was totally frustrated physically and mental in first uh, from March to June and physically too much. And then first festival and then I thought this is not sufficient. I started the talk and this talk was very, very helpful for me. I still believe in the nature. What we call, you know that you have translated Sanskrit books and read that Prakriti, Purush and Prakriti. And Purush, you know that is the issue, the supreme soul and the Prakriti is the nature which is angry now like a mother goddess which is angry these days and we are suffering. That will create some way to the needy people to the such kind of talk. So, now let us move to the poetry. Trin, I want to know from you that how, how, you, how you write poetry and then you read the poem you gave me. I have uh, some poems translated and I will read the Hindi translation. What was your question? How do I write generally? Uh, why do you write? Why, why do you write? Uh, yeah. I how no do you <laughs> no. Okay. Then uh, uh, how do you write? Do you know that? I don't know how do I write. But I know yeah. why I write. <laughs> okay. <laughs> why, do, why do you write? Yeah. Say something about your writing. Mm -hmm. I have thought about it several times and uh, it is just uh, even not a part of me, but uh, it's, uh, it's like myself. It's uh, not from, uh, from myself, it's like breathing, breathing or, um, or part of being. It's uh, just a natur natural way for me how to how to live and how to also connect to people. It's for me, it's uh, an important uh, way to connect and communicate. And I uh, even think that uh, through, through my poems, I can be more precise than just talking about something. So that's what I think. Please read your poem. Uh, do you like to read Kolkata first? Yes, why not? Kolkata. Tänä ovat olm. Mu kyntä all. Tänä ovat olm. Mu laukute all. Tänä ovat olm. Mu kele all. Tänä vaat ollem. Mu naha all. Tänä vaat sätentav tollem. Ainos, mis nii palju väärt, et kuuluda mulle. Thank you. I will read the Hindi translation uh, from the English because it is from uh, uh, from second language, so I do not know how close it is, but it is like this. Kolkata. Sarkon ki dhul mere nakhono mein. Sarkon ki dhul mere palkon ke niche. Sarkon ki dhul mere jeep ke niche. Sarkon ki dhul mere tacha ke bhitar. गलियों में चमकती धूल यही तो है एक बहुमूल्य चीज जो केवल कही जा सकती है सिर्फ मेरी सिर्फ मेरी इट्स अ वंडरफुल स्मॉल पोएम थैंक यू शैल वी रीड अनदर यू हैव सेंट मी द स्मॉल पोएम्स वन बाय वन वी विल रीड 
Yeah, but uh, which one could you? If we, um, um, I don't have any English right now. Okay, La We will start from the starting. I have translated all which you have given. Okay. Ärkasid surma mõistetute planeedil ja vaatasid ringi. Armu andmist ei olnud. Või iga hetk, iga hinge tõmme, antud, siis võetud. Ärkasid surma mõistetute planeedil ja tahtsid tagasi, aga ei saanud. Aeg tuli lõpuni kanda. Välja mõõdetud. Õppisid väljendama oma tahtmist, kõndima, rääkima, saama oma tahtmist, salaja. Käte kõverdused kongis. Aeg tuli ära kanda ja siis kõrvale heita nagu rebal. This is the first part, no? Shall I read it? Uh, it was the first one. Yeah. Uh, uh, I will read in Hindi. Tum apman ke upagraha pe jage. Tum apman ke upagraha pe jage aur aspas dekha. Har pal, har saans di ja rahi thi. Phir li bhi ja rahi thi. Tum apman ke upagraha pe jage aur dekha ki diya phir liya gaya. तुम अपमान के उपग्रह पर जगे और वापस लौटना चाहते हो लेकिन नहीं काल की सेवा अंत तक करनी चाहिए पूरी तरह मापना भी जरूरी है मापा हुआ तुमने अपनी इच्छा व्यक्त करना सीखा चलना बात करना भी बात को छिपाना भी गुप्त रूप से और इच्छा पूरी करना तहकाने में पुशअप करते हुए काल ने जो दिया था और फिर वापिस ले लिया Thank you. Thank Now you. the next one. <laughs> next one. Thank you. Sul on kerge mind leida. Vaata suurlinnade kõige rahva rohkemaid väljakuid. Kusagil seal. Kalliste kofikute ja hotellide kõrval. Tolmuste põõsaste varjus. Kusagil seal. Vaata inimtühje teltasid põhjala tundrat mehiko laguuni rägastike. Olen jätnud sulle märke. Ootan oma sisemise jõe kaldal. Kui hakkad allika juurest tulema, on sul kerge. Mind leida. Thank you. Tumahare liie muje koch pana sahaj hai. तुम्हारे लिए मुझे खोज पाना सहज है बस शहरों के सबसे अधिक आबादी वाले वर्गों को खोजो स्थानों को खोजो या फिर वहां जहां महंगे कॉफी हाउस या होटल हो धूल की झाड़ियों के नीचे कहीं ना कहीं सुनताल सुनसान डेल्टास उत्तरी टुंड्रा मैक्सिकन लगून भूल भूलैया को देखें मैंने आपके लिए अपने हस्ताक्षर छोड़ दिए हैं अपनी आंतरिक नदी की प्रतीक्षा कर रही हूँ यदि तुम वसंत से प्रारंभ करते हो तो मुझे खोज पाना आसान है थैंक यू नेक्स्ट तुला मिन्ना एदासी एंडस्त एटियादा एल्लो मुई तो Aastaid su kesta kõrbenud silma august pudeneb kõdu. Edasi tuleb minna läbi endise enda, üle endise maa. Kusagil ongi kodu, kuhu muidu ei saa. Thank you. जीवित रहना है तो तुम्हें आगे आना पड़ेगा जीवित रहना है तो तुम्हें आगे आना पड़ेगा अपने से भी आगे या फिर अपनी जली हुई पुतलियों से धूल झड़ रही होगी और तुम्हें आना होगा अपने सत्व से भी 
अपने देश को पार करते हुए अपने घर को कहीं और खोजते हुए नहीं तो तुम कहीं पहुंच नहीं पाओगे थैंक यू पिहमा ते ऑन मोटा तुवा मास वेलकु ते ऑन मोटा तुवा मास लिनो ते ऑन मोटा तुल्ट मास बॉडी ते ऑन मोटा वेट मास सूट या ते ऑन मोटा मर्ड मास माते ऑन मोटा सिंट थैंक यू पेड़ के तने से बरसात की धरती की ओर राह पेड़ के तने से बरसात की धरती की ओर रहा पेड़ के तने से बिजली की धरती की ओर रहा हवा से पंछी की और रहा पंछी की धरती की ओर रहा जल से नाव की धरती की ओर रहा समंदर से खवैये की राह धरती की ओर और धरती की राह तुम पर समाओ आई लाइक दिस पोएम वेरी मच बिकॉज in this poem the earth is the center that's what i understood said everything the barsha the rain the uh, lightning the i mean the uh, uh, birds uh, uh, all these are uh, even the seas uh, the uh, boats everything is coming towards the earth and the earth towards to you so yes. that uh, so i because i am not happy with my translation i must tell you because i have done in uh, one big mostly i do take uh, three four uh, proofs uh, but uh, in first translation itself i love this poem very much it's a very special and very deep and last line last is only very small poem can you finish it last one Kõigel on põhjus. Tee, too ja tunne. Ainult mind mitte. Sihitisest pöördusin tegu sõnaks. Mind ei saa kätte sihi kui täpselt tahes. Olen sinu ja sihtmärgi pahel. it was uh, the last, last one yeah uh, aapka kitna bhar hai kuch zyada nahi bhar kuch hota bhi nahi hai gardan par koi patthar nahi banda hai aur jeb mein muttiyan bhi nahi it's a very meaningful poem thank you thanks a lot thank Train. you uh, now we will listen to mathura uh matras poems were translated in 2013 is, is it uh, some um, because you gave me uh, the translation uh, uh, so uh, we will read from those trans, uh, those poems uh, which uh, which poem do you want to read the ske- a sketch or tropics which poem do you want to read oh sorry i am sorry ah which poem yeah. do you want to read ah. yeah let's let's read tropics then tropics okay so please <laughs> read uh, this uh, i have a translation for with by gautam vashisht yeah please mm-hmm. yeah i think these translations were made, were made for 2013 prithia but actually yeah. all these poems were written in 2008 so the year when i first was in uh, kritia in uh, chandigarh so uh, but they... because, because in chandigarh uh, the translations were done in punjabi mm-hmm. so uh, that is why i feel we use these poems in uh, 2013 yeah okay uh, yeah please read okay tropica 
Teis pool palmisalu on on, okstest, latidest, õlgedest tehtud. Orans ja rünk sinine on sealsete südamete värv, kui nad lesivad laiselt ajatuse võbelevas vines. Teis pool ookeani on kirikud ja kohvikuterassid, kohtusaalid ja maaligaleriid, teis pool ookeani, mis kirgas kui absint hulluva kunstniku tihti tühjenevas klaasis, on sügavuste head ja seaduslikud salved, siin on vaid su valguse ja pimeduse nimetu ja tõre tootem, üht lugu kartmatult kõnelev hüüb. This is a very beautiful, very beautiful translation, I must say. This is translated by Gautam Vashisht, Ayan Vrat. एक तार का झुरमुट जिसके पार एक झोपड़ी है घास फूस बांस और सरकंडे की दिलों का रंग है कुछ नीला और कुछ नारंगी जो इतमान से पड़ा है यहाँ अनंतता की जमी हुई धुंध में और महासागर के उस पार गिरजा घर है लॉन है कचहरिया है चित्र शालाएं है महासागर के उस पार गिरजा घर और छतों पर कहवे घर कोट और कलार शीर दीर्घाए और दूसरी ओर समंदर जो इतना चमकदार है जैसे कि खाली गिलास में झाकता हुआ चिरायते का शरबत बगले पेंटर द्वारा रखे गए बेहतर और कानूनी गहराइयों से के संग्रह है यहाँ नाम रहित कुल चिन्ह तुम्हारी रोशनी और अंधेरे का एक बच्चा थे ये जो सबको बेखोफ कहता है सो वेरी स्ट्रेंज पोयम बिकॉज यू आर गिविंग ए पिक्चर ऑफ ए सीनरी यू आर एंड एंड लास्ट टू लाइन्स आर वेरी डिफरेंट फ्रॉम द अर्ली पोएट्री इज वेरी वेरी डिफरेंट डू यू वॉन्ट टू से समथिंग अबाउट दिस पोएम ऑल द पोएम इज रिटर्न I was thinking of Paul Gauguin, the French painter who in his later life uh, kind of emigrated or went away to the uh, islands in uh, the Pacific. Uh, so I was trying to look through his eyes at his art and at the world. And um, yeah, the end... Um, I mean, maybe my conclusion was that we are traversing this line between light and darkness in our art or in our writing as well. And uh, it's um, in some ways you never know which is more meaningful. Like you, I felt that you have to look both ways to to really know where you are. So. Maybe that's what I can say about it. So it's a beautiful. Now, next poem we read, Summer Presents. Uh, well, whichever you like. Huh? Which one? Let's read it then. It's a small poem. With summer Presents? Yes. Suve uh, Kohalolu. Uh. Suvi saabus ja röövis meilt tuntud enese kaitse. Langesime kaua laiast vaikusest läbi. Valmikuks põimitud ohked ja täev, mis kannab merede lõhku, ei jätnud meile muud peale pika pilgu rohelisse lõpmatusse. Grishmiki upastiti. I just want to tell my audience who are from India. that uh, the estonia is country which is which does not have sun like us because i remember these both poets in 2008 when we were walking in the garden both of them started looking upward and i saw that both of them looking at the sun and uh, then i thought that uh, the in european country the sun is 
uh, actually we in our any country or any civilization sun is the biggest deity but in your country sun is something else very very related to your life so anyway this is the grishm the summer grishm ne aate hi chura liye hamare sare kavach ek lambe antaral tak hum ghire rahe ek gehri shwet khamoshi se aahe guthti gayi kabhi chotiyon mein kabhi jahaz ke palon mein jo samandar par laati hai hawaye aur juda nahi hoti humse ek tak nigah ke alawa har kuch anant hai हरियाली में इट्स अ ब्यूटीफुल वी नेवर थिंक समर लाइक दिस द वे यू सेड दैट दैट द समर हैज स्टोलन योर क्लोज इट इज लाइक इन एन अथर वे देर इज अ ब्यूटिफुल हिम इन अग्वेद एन अथर वे दर दिशीज द पोएट इज दैट एट नाइट वन ब्यूटिफुल लेडी कम्स and she takes away our animals our um, uh, uh, this uh, this forms what is this krishi forms and our uh, everything the greenery it actually they wanted to talk out because it when it becomes dark so they were imagine that they have they, she comes at night with the sound of uh, uh uh it was a beautiful sound because at that time only the cows come back to home and then they it this woman the night she takes away she stolen away our all animals our all houses and the greenery around us so it's a beautiful image so what is the next poem do you want to read you have many poems tra- in mm. translation maybe let's read this uh, nostalgia okay purani what is it emma ma mukatki ne kuna mõtsin küll valgust küll leian vaid sind Kivised väljad ja punane muda, pärane puhus alu kui piima täis rind. Lõhnab ja õitseb, hoiab mind süles, see hetk on see hetk, mu mesilase laps. Sa lõhned ja kosud, sa tallikaks kordsa, mööda söösta vaid teid kohtad pimedust, ma kaugemas kohas, mu kallis. Sa pole seal minu verine märter, oled muud kui valge küünlaleek küll. Aga igatsus sinus öeldakse sulle, olnud kunagi päris. Ja seda, mis mõtlet, jääme me kõik, kuid seda ei tunne meist kunagi keegi. Tõesti, me oleme, ajastu märgid, me oleme kõik aeg. Aeg on kõik ja meil pole aega. Nii me usume, uskmatust rohkem kui ise ennast. Uh, you're not switched on your your voice uh, nostalgia purani yaade matrabhumi meri tooti hui kashti main prakash dhoondta hu aur sirf tumko pata hu patrile khet lal geeli mitti aur wo neebu ki katare aise jaise kisi sugandhit kusumit vriksh ne mujhe god mein bitha diya ho इसी लम्हे मुझे आगोश में ले लिया हो क्या यही लम्हा मेरा मक्खी बचपन महकता उमड़ता है तुम बसंत बनोगे और झुलसती सड़कों पर यहां से बहुत दूर अंधेरों में मिलोगे और मेरी प्रिय वहां तुम रक्त रंजित शहीद नहीं होगे तुम सफेद मोमबत्तियों की लौ के सिवा कुछ और होगे इतना तो तय है मगर तुम्हारे भीतर की आस तुमसे कहती है कि यथार्थ ये कभी था ही नहीं ये मालूम है और हम सबको ये मालूम है कि तुम्हारा सोचना क्या है मगर हम सब ने सच कहे तो ऐसा कभी नहीं सोचा हम वक्त के निशान हैं हम सब के सब और हमें 
वक्त मिला ही नहीं इसलिए हम भरोसा करते हैं ना भरोसे से अपने से भी ज्यादा दिस इज द थिंग आई लव दैट एट योर लास्ट टू लाइन एक्चुअली द चेंज द चेंज द द मूड ऑफ द पोय दैट इज ए फिंटेस्टिक ट्विस्ट यू ब्रिंक डू यू वॉन्ट टू रीड मोर well if then maybe as a last one this uh, spring comes basant aa raha hai keva tule pole tähtis mida ütleksin sulle peal mina ma ise ja nägema tundma mäed kõrbuvad kitsaste linnade kohal jõed voolavad eludest läbi Sinu soovid jäävad su südame sisse ja muutuvad üha. Ja kevad tuleb, vihm ja vaikus, rahulik kui haua põhi. Kuniks tõuseb tuul ja kahistab puudes, tormab kolinal pruune katuseid pidi. Su hääle ja valguse ja värvi, su käed õpivad ravima ja andma. Ent su mõtetelt kaob struktuur, su elu kaotab mõõdetava kuju. Just elu. Ainult tema suudab vaadata sulle ainiti silma ja olla korraga halastamatu ja õnnistav. Lastes sul valida. Lastes sul valida ikka ja jälle. Kas leiad tee? Kas leiad tee sel rannul ise enda juurde? Thank you. Basant aa raha hai. Fark nahi padta. Mere kehne se tumhe jana hi hoga. अपने लिए देखने और महसूस ने को कि शहरों की चोटी पर पर्वतों के साए और नन्नी सी जानों के बीच बहती नदी तमन्नाएं दिलों के घर में रहती हैं और रह रह कर रूप बदलती हैं हाँ सच है कि वसंत आने को है मेघ सरगोशी और गमगीन खामोशी में और इससे पहले कि बहती हवा के पेड़ों से सरसराती निकले और पुराने धूसर छतों पे जाकर मचले तुम्हारे लफ्जों में रंग और रवानी दोनों खिल उठेंगे और रंग चढ़ेगा हाथों पर बल मरहम का इनायत का लेकिन सोच करवट लेगी शायद जिंदगी के मायने बदल जाए कुछ ऐसे की जिंदगी झाकेगी आंखों में और निर्ममता को धो देगी दिल के सारे मैल पुराने और रह रह कर खोलेंगे नए सिरों के मुहाने क्या मिल सकेगी राह तुम्हें क्या पहुंच पाओगे लक्ष्य तक जो कि तुम खुद हो दिस इज ब्यूटीफुल पोएम एंड ब्यूटीफुल ट्रांसलेशन आल्सो आई मस्ट से दैट ट्रांसलेशन दीज ट्रांसलेशन आर वेरी गुड आई डोंट रिमेंबर दैट दिस आई थिंक दिस बॉय वॉज दे आर इन द यूनिवर्सिटी इट सेल्फ बट दीज ट्रांसलेशन आर वेरी गुड now uh, uh, i want to ask uh, margas one thing you have translated niti shastra you have translated uh, bhagavad gita uh, what do you uh, think and why do you feel like translating these ancient literature uh, uh, from india what make you translate hmm Well, I'm not sure there's there's an easy answer but um well how does how do I say you 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 I, meant I, I make you make easy for you uh you uh, somebody might have told you this book should be translated is it because you have not read it mm-hmm. is it so is it like this well i'll i'll, I'll, I'll answer like this that uh, you also in the beginning you mentioned kunwar narayan who i've also translated and he was a very i mean he was a very is a is a great poet but he was a very um let's say reserved person and uh from the few experiences of contact i had with him i i also had the sense that uh, he appreciated the uh, 
let's say the slowness or the or uh, of life or like the life to go on in a on a peaceful stride believing that in this stride we actually might get further than you know rushing everywhere goes uh, uh, rushing everywhere we might actually miss we might as well run past of what is the whole point of i don't know our existence or whatever we are doing here so maybe i feel a little bit similar about these uh, very ancient texts of uh, india that uh, even though they are i mean mm, Nitya Shastra is maybe a little, little bit more recent, though it's also very, very old. But uh, texts like uh, Bhagavad Gita, uh, I mean, they're probably among the, the oldest literatures, at least written literatures that, that we have uh, on the planet. So, uh, I mean, not the very oldest, but still dating back several thousand years. So... Um, but in some ways, I feel they have more to say to us today than maybe these very kind of contemporary uh, writings or, or well, what to speak of the, the news and everything we are trying to keep up with. So I think they offer a basis which, first of all, has endured all this time. They were written so long ago and they are still with us. That means already something. It means that they have been understandable and meaningful for people throughout these hundreds and thousands of years. So they have proven their value in that sense. And uh, it also means they really say something which, uh, which is meaningful or has something to say regardless of the time we are living in. I mean, yeah, that, I mean, that would basically be my answer. I maybe would only add that um, I'm planning a retranslation of Bhagavad Gita. So I think some of these old texts, like, like Gita or also Niti Shastra and others, they are texts you can also, as a translator, you can return to. And kind of there always there is always more in them. I think uh, Gandhiji also somewhere, he said that Bhagavad Gita is, uh, for him, it is like... Um, sunrise every time he opens it um, he sees something new there or finds something some new meaning there as you know that i am a student of uh, ancient literature and uh, we are the people who read technically also so technically bhagavad gita is not very ancient it is quite new or it is new compared to upanishadas and my research in when I was in a MA means when I was doing post graduation, my research was that uh, what is the effect of Upanishadas on Gita? So beauty of Gita is that there are twelve main Upanishadas which deal with the philosophy and very great philosophy, and Gita has taken adopted those philosophy in very beautiful manner in a one poetic form which became very easy for person to understand the whole philosophical ideology of Indian uh, Vedic literature. So it is very important for me, but the time according to, because we see it very technical also. Uh, we keep our emotion aside. No, we keep, uh, we see, uh, watch these books with, uh, technolo technically. Yes. It is, there is no doubt that Vedic hymns and Vedic literature, which, comes, which is very huge, like uh, Vedic itself is a very huge, is the most ancient available literature in the world. But translating Gita is very important because it takes the essence of all these Vedic and Upanishadic philosophies in a single poetic form. Uh, 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 that is, the Vithak is always created, that who re, uh, who uh, gave, uh, 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 they say, who read this uh, Gita and Pravachan at the time of war and all, this is all Mithak to create the story. 
so that according to logic it is there niti shas is after that but niti shas is very important in a contemporary time technically because it also gives many many um, small small things which could be helpful for the for the king for the politician for the people for the family for the family head and for the common people because they are giving you many small small clues we have another book like this that is uh, tirukullar tiruvalluvar's tirukullar that is also like niti shas is it is almost like dows you know that dows uh, feeling it is almost like dow so anyhow what you have done is a beautiful work i expect you to do more and more beautiful work trin do you want to say something about bhagavad gita or about uh, this e- event tonight or what you say whatever you like not <laughs> about this gita or event uh, about poetry or your life or whatever you like you can say there is no need of talking about gita gita is uh, mathura's thing you say something which you like to say and there is one thing i i would like to add uh, once i read uh, for people um, mathura's uh, poetry it was a poetry evening when poets uh, were supposed to read not only their own poems but uh, whatever they want and i uh choose uh, matura's poems and uh, reading them aloud with voice it was a big surprise for me i think maybe then i started uh, to understand uh, matura's poetry even better it was flowing like nothing else i had ever read it was such a great uh, experience and it was uh, healing as you talked before it was really a healing experience to read these poems aloud so that was what was what i wanted to say so thank you matura yeah uh, i will also like to say same thing that why i translate because reading others poetry is actually enriching mm-hmm. sometimes i don't want to say something but i wanted to say but i don't have words but in my place you may say or mathura may say or anyone else can say and here i get fulfillment satisfaction because the words which you meanings your feelings you want another thing i love this thing that reading loudly when i read for you i when i read in my mind it was different poem okay when i read for you loudly it is different poem i do not know how it changes and uh, yesterday when i was i translated your poem i thought it is perfect when i was reading because it was my translation i said no i made mistake <laughs> <laughs> so i am sorry for that i will correct all these trans- uh, mistakes so reading loudly itself which we lost Mm-hmm. which we lost in those days that oh, there was a time when people used to read loudly poetry we yes. lost that and the reading loudly whether it is yours poem or somebody else poem is very very important so mathura now what you want to say well i'll say about trains poetry then an <laughs> answer that uh, you don't both, have to no but <laughs> Well, I thought of it uh, when uh, I completely agree with uh, Rati that one of the qualities of Kita is that it's very condensed, especially in the original, which which is one of the things which makes translating it difficult because you have to kind of expand it to to give the meaning. Uh, but I actually find the same quality in Trine's poetry, like this this very feeling of very condensed uh, poetry that uh, nothing is extra. only what what uh, what cannot be uh, done without this is there and 
Yeah, I feel this is um, this is a very refreshing quality in these uh, times of you know information overload and so on, where everybody's trying to give more information. But here, in this mm -hmm. case, poetry is doing the other, uh, doing it the other way around. Like you really condense it down to that which is well, let's say the essence or or the essence of that poem at least. So yes, thank you. Thank yeah, you. Uh, I I I also want to say that uh, in a, in my experience with Estonian poets, I think I know five of you. Uh, no, four of you: Don Doris Kareva, Eva, Trent, and Mathura. And I find that all of you have very compact poetry, very deep. It's like a like a like we say that spirituality in in V1 in it. It is introvert, which we lost in Indian poetry. We are talking a lot about many things. If it's feminists openly talk about this, that, that, that. It's not bad, I think, but sometimes when we say that. Poetics, you know that Kavya Shastra, Mathura might have studied a uh, little bit Kavya Shastra also in Sanskrit. You have to be very, very miser in using words for the poetry and use ma many kind of images and uh, many what we say that alankaras to bring the beauty in the poetry. So. My experience with the Estonian poetry, that's what I was always eager to invite you people, because this is very different kind of poetry in contem contemporary time, especially in India. We are very verbal. We want to speak a lot. We, we do not know that where to cut and where to clean this poet poem. Because if we need so many words, we, don't, we need not write poetry. I can write an essay. But when we are writing poetry, it should be very compact and very deep. Thank you, my friends. Thanks a lot. It was great, great day uh, with you. And you suddenly accept both of you together. It was a, actually a Estonian day for me. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Matara. Yeah. Uh, thank you. It's the first thing I've done online. But once I thought, well, Ratij, yes, I'll, I'll say yes. So, yes. I was asking for so many days. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mathura. You're my brother. Trin, very nice to see you again. You are same as you were in 2008. Beautiful. As you. As you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yes. <laughs>